This is ABC 15 Mornings. The race to get tested. I would say that the testing demands are higher than ever before. Christmas behind us, but the new year is fast approaching. The future of coal. For all intents and purposes, coal's gone. It's certainly not its way out. Why retired miners are having trouble getting their benefits. The rush to return. We saw those holiday return windows starting even earlier and getting more generous. Retailers ready to take back your unwanted gifts. Plus, for the first time in years, the Arizona Cardinals are headed to the playoffs. Yeah, baby. I mean, that's exciting. I know it's a little bit of stumbling along the way, but we'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're off and running here on a Monday. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Kaylee O'Kelly here in studio. Our Nick Saletti is off and Justin Pazera is waking up with us too. Uh, good morning. Great to be with you. It's six o'clock hour at six o'clock right on the dot. Jorge Torres is here with a check on that forecast. And oh, if you like things to be a little wet out there, this is going to be a good forecast for you. Yeah, great forecast. Wet, cold, unsettled, windy for some of you. And yes, even more snow in the forecast for parts of the high country as early as today. But uh, right now, the temperatures in the valley are generally in the upper 40s. Uh, to low 50s, right at 50 degrees at Sky Harbor. The cool spot, Goodyear, checking in at 45 degrees. And a look at your planner for the rest of your Monday, showing those temperatures uh, dipping into the mid-40s at 7 o'clock, then warming up into the upper 50s and lower 60s later today. And we do introduce a slight chance for a shower uh, later this evening at 10% with a high of 61. But as I mentioned, for parts of the high country today, we're talking about the chance for snow along with windy conditions once again. So we'll talk more about the unsettled weather pattern that we're anticipating, which could lead to a soggy New Year's Eve and part of the state too. But first, let's check out those morning roads with Megan Thompson, who's joining us once again from vacation. Welcome back, Megan. Oh, thank you so much, Jorge. I hope all of you had a wonderful holiday with your friends and family. I'm backtracking those current road conditions for you, so you know what to expect if you are back out there to getting to work. As I take you wide to show you what you're dealing with on your traffic maps, we have mostly green conditions, but a few hazards to give you that heads up on. So the I-17 southbound near Northern Avenue, this is actually off the freeway at the intersection as you're making your way onto the freeway. So your traffic flows look fine, but if this is how you get on to the I-17, just be prepared to see some flashing lights in that area. On Grand Avenue eastbound from the 101 to the 17, that average speed is just above the speed limit. You're looking good despite some yellow on your maps. Your drive time is 15 minutes. Off the freeway, Broadway Road and 19th Avenue, we have a crash near the Durango Curve. Checking over with the East Valley, US 60 westbound from the 202 to the 10, that drive time is it's right around 15 minutes. All right, Megan, thank you. Our, a Phoenix police officer hospitalized right now after an early morning crash. Well, yeah, let's get out to our Christine Stanwood. She's live near 27th Avenue in Bethany home. And Christine, we know the details are still very limited here. Very limited, but we are obtaining uh, exclusive surveillance video this morning of moments leading up to when this hit and run crash happened with a Phoenix police officer. Let's pull up this video and show you the moments step by step of what happened. You can see the driver of this dark minivan turning left, heading east when he hits the officer. You see the driver uh, turning suddenly. The officer on the motorcycle slams into the back passenger side, thrown into the air several times and then onto the ground. Just after a few seconds, several people run towards the officer lying there on the ground. Then almost immediately you can see an ambulance arrive uh, to help the officer. We know at this hour that that officer is at St. Joseph's Hospital. The last report that we received is that officer is in serious condition but remains stable. Again, that video you're only seeing on ABC 15 this morning and we're showing you that video because at this hour the driver of that dark minivan has not been caught. So Phoenix police, they need your help. If you recognize that car, if you saw it in the area around 1 a.m., again, we're near 26th Avenue and Bethany Home Road. They want to hear from you. Again, an officer is in serious condition. The last reports, but he is stable, so they need your help. Kaylee. Hard to believe he's okay after seeing that video. Christine, thank you for that live report. Oh my gosh, thank you, Christine. So the crash comes as Phoenix Police uh, Officer uh, Tyler Moldovan is still in critical condition. The department has not given any updates on his health in the last several days. Officer Moldovan was shot eight times nearly two weeks ago near 15th Avenue in Camelback. A vigil was held last week for the 22 year old officer. It is almost five minutes past the hour. The Omicron variant of COVID-19 fueling a new wave of cases and hospitalizations, and this is in several states.
have all really accepted that, you know, COVID is here to say the coronavirus is going to be endemic, meaning it's always going to be around. So the rate of daily cases here in this country from Omicron has surpassed the numbers seen with the Delta strain from the summer, right? The number of hospitalizations are lower than the peaks earlier this year, but health officials say that could change. Deaths from COVID right now are almost entirely preventable. Even with Omicron, if you are vaccinated and boosted, I can confidently say you will not die from this virus. So 12 states have seen at least a 10% hike in COVID-19 hospitalizations, and that's this past week compared to the week before, according to the Department of Health and Human Services. The NHL season will pick back up this week after an extended COVID-19 break. The Arizona Coyotes will take the ice tomorrow night. COVID-19 has impacted nearly 70 games this season. The league allowing each team to have a taxi squad of up to six substitute players to fill that lineup. Well, this morning, a 41 year old hiker recovering after needing some help getting down from Dove Mountain. Crews are telling us that she was two miles up that trail when she started to feel dizzy and sick. Firefighters were able to get her down safely using uh, what a lot of us have come to know as the big wheel. So thankful for that. Well, whether you've already taken down your Christmas decorations, maybe you're waiting until shortly after the new year, like a week from today, you do have a lot of options on what to do with that live tree. <clears throat> maybe some of the, the needles are brown right now, right? From the east side of the, uh, the valley all the way west, there are several recycling options available. Just check with your city's website. In Phoenix, there are 18 drop-off spots open, and they will remain open through January 8th. This week, retailers across the country are bracing for a whole new rush of customers in their stores. Anyone hoping to bring back or exchange some of the things that they may have gotten for Christmas? Here's ABC's Megan Trevisian with more. This morning, round two of the holiday shopping season is underway. This time, it's all about those returns. I overbuy and then lay it all out and decide what I want to keep. Presents to my mom. Yeah, just buy some couple of like shoe sizes and then see what fits her. Experts estimating there will be $120 billion of returns this year. The good news, many businesses are offering expanded return windows. This year and last year, due to the pandemic and the increased need for flexibility, we saw those holiday return windows starting even earlier and getting more generous, encompassing gifts that were purchased as early as October. Walmart is expanding its return deadlines up to 90 days after December 26th. Same with Target, depending on when the item was purchased. And Amazon is allowing returns through January 31st for gifts bought as early as October 1st. And since you can get your refund on an Amazon gift card, the person whose gift you're returning will never be notified or alerted. Another option, your local Kohl's accepts Amazon returns. Other retailers are also trying to make returns easier for the 30% of gifts purchased online annually. In a lot of cases, you can return uh, gifts that were purchased online in store to a retailer's in-store location um, if you're more comfortable with that. So that it can be a lot easier for people rather than, you know, having to figure out how to ship a gift back. But if you don't want to return that unwanted gift, think about donating the item or regifting it. And if you got a gift card you don't want, you can sell it online for cash. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News. Okay, so a few ideas there. How about this? It's time to party like it's 2015 around here. Our Arizona Cardinals, they are headed to the playoffs for the first time in six years years. So this is despite a couple of rough games mm. here, like yeah. falling to the Colts on mm. Christmas Day. We do want to say thank you, though, to the Minnesota Vikings for losing to the Rams. Thank you, Minnesota. I know we've got Minnesota fans here in the Valley, but this is exciting for us. This is the Cards 11th playoff appearance in franchise history. The Cardinals are going to take on the Cowboys Sunday and then finish out the regular season against the Seattle Seahawks. Well, trying to get back on track next on ABC 15 mornings, how Omicron hit airline crews and canceled hundreds of flights. I'm Joe St. George in Mate One, West Virginia. Some coal mines are actually reopening in our country, but that is not resulting in much optimism from coal miners. We explain what they want from the government and what they aren't receiving coming up. And how about a glimpse of maybe what the future could look like? Is this a possible solution when it comes to affordable housing? We're going to take a closer look at 3D printed homes. And this is a live view of these cars heading into the tunnel here in downtown Phoenix. Plenty of them using the brakes, shining those headlights, 
out and about this morning. So we'll check those desert drive times still ahead. Sika Meji currently stationed at Prince Sultan in Saudi Arabia. I just want to give a shout out to my family, my son. I miss you guys. Happy holidays. Another round of talks starts today in an effort to resume the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. European negotiators will meet to see if there is a path forward. The U.S. and Iran are not expected to participate in today's discussions. The last round of negotiations ended last week after Iran's team walked out. Iran has insisted on the immediate removal of all sanctions. Today, the Los Angeles Police Department will release body cam video from a shooting that killed a 14-year-old girl. The teen was hit after police shot at an assault suspect outside a store in North Hollywood. Police believe the bullet went through a dressing room wall. Air travelers who create issues while aboard planes can lose their TSA pre-check credentials. According to TSA, more than 10 million Americans have that pre-check, which allows them to bypass certain security measures. So if you need a passport, it's going to cost you more. Starting today, the State Department is increasing the security surcharge fees by 20 bucks. The fees vary by age, so travelers 16 and older applying for the first time will have to pay $165. Cole, it has been powering homes for hundreds of years, and while many want fossil fuels to be reduced, production is up across the country. As our Joe St. George explains right now, coal miners are concerned that their benefits could be impacted by what's going on in Washington, D.C. Something is happening in coal towns across the country. The trains carrying coal from the mines are becoming more frequent, not less. The U.S. Department of Energy reports coal use is up 22 percent from last year. That's the first increase in seven years. Mines like this are reopening because of demand, mainly from electric companies who still rely on coal to generate power. Coal is cheaper to burn than oil or gas. Yeah, I started working in the mines in 1971. The news you might think would make this group of retired coal miners excited. They live in Appalachia. Coal defines this region's history and economy. For all intents and purposes, coal's gone. It's certainly on its way out. But this group doesn't believe coal has much of a future beyond this latest boom, believing environmental concerns will inevitably prevail. No, these coal miners... Yes, we feel forgotten are actually upset right now, and it all has to do with black lung disease, a medical condition that comes from years of breathing coal dust, scarring the lungs. The majority of the people don't know what coal miners are going through, the retired miners and things now. Terry Steele says miners like him were promised black lung benefits, which is a government program established in 1979 to compensate miners for their dangerous work. Their current monthly check is around 700 bucks. But right now, the future of that is unclear. The excise tax on coal companies that funds the program expires at the end of the year, and the Build Back Better bill was set to extend it four years, but currently its passage is up in the air. And right now, it doesn't have the votes. Ron Yates says it's already hard enough to get the benefits. He doesn't want limited funds making it any harder. I'm be 70 years old in April, but I was 64. I've been turned down five times. These men say Congress needs to address the issue as soon as possible. Over 25,000 miners across the country currently receive benefits. So we're not asking for much. This was the energy center of this country. In May 1, West Virginia, I'm Joe St. George. Time right now is 616 on your Monday morning. A meteorologist, Jorge Torres. Temperatures below freezing up in the high country in Flagstaff. The Grand Canyon now at 2833, uh, barely above freezing there in Heber, 36 in Payson. And across the lower deserts this morning, temperatures generally in the upper 40s and lower 50s. You also need a light jacket, at least here in the valley. Winds will be an issue later today. In fact, they're starting to pick up now uh, along the 40 there in Flagstaff. Wind speeds at 17, 10 at the Grand Canyon and Bullhead City too. And 20 as you head toward Shola, where a wind advisory will take effect later today. And for much of Arizona, too, at least in the northern part of the state, where gusts of 50 to 55 miles per hour can that be ruled out later this afternoon. We are going to stop future cast winds at 10 o'clock when the wind advisory takes effect for parts of the state, including in Mojave County. But notice at midday, the winds really begin to start howling, especially along the eastern slopes of the Mucayon Rim and also the San Francisco Peaks area toward the White Mountains. Wind speeds anywhere from 20 to uh, close to 30 miles per hour, gusting to 45 to 50 at times. Here in the valley, just some breezes later this afternoon. And then starting early tomorrow morning, the winds will begin to finally subside. 
but we do have two storms on the way. The first one moving in will produce the wind and then that chance of rain and mountain snow through at least early Wednesday. And then the next storm is set to arrive right around Thursday, but especially impacting your forecast for New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. So it could be a soggy end to the year and a soggy beginning to the new year. Now, as far as snowfall amounts with storm number one, It'll be on the impressive side for some locations, anywhere from one to three inches in Sedona and as high as five to nine there in Williams and in Flagstaff. Here in the valley today, a slight chance of an evening shower, otherwise mostly cloudy and breezy with a high of 61. Then across Arizona today, temperatures in the 30s there in Flag, 41 in Heber, 43 in Prescott and 60 as you head toward Quartzsite and 62 in Yuma this afternoon. Your seven day in the valley showing those temperatures dropping into the 50s tomorrow. Look at that chance of rain though. 80% 60% Thursday back to 80% on New Year's Eve with cooler temperatures in the morning lows in the 30s to kick off the new year in Flagstaff. Chance of snow picks up tonight at 50% a better chance throughout the day tomorrow at 90% and the snow opportunity still looking rather decent through at least New Year's Eve with highs staying in the 20s and 30s and lows as cold as three degrees Sunday morning. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. 618 now on your Monday morning. Good morning to you and Megan Thompson tracking those current traffic conditions for you. And in the Tonopah area, we are dealing with two incidents. One is a crash. That fire is still out at the scene. First responders are I-10 eastbound near Salome Road. And then we have some debris in the roadway at Wintersburg Road on the I-10 eastbound. As I check that desert drive time for you past these two incidents from Tonopah, I-10 eastbound. As you're making your way to the Loop 101, your average speed through that stretch still looks pretty good. You might want to slow down as you're making way past these scenes to give those first responders some space, but overall your drive time is still right around 30 to 35 minutes in the valley. We are still dealing with this crash on the I-17 southbound near northern. Now this one is at the intersection as you're making your way on to the freeway and off the freeway Broadway Road and 19th Avenue near the Durango curve. We are still tracking that crash heading over to the East Valley, the 60, the 202 Red Mountain, and the 202 Santan look great, plus the 101 and the 10 as you're making your way around the Broadway curve. As we look at the Loop 202 westbound, this is the Red Mountain Freeway near Val Vista Drive. Plenty of people out and about, and those conditions look good. So here are those desert drive times in our normal trouble spots. I-10 eastbound from Loop 303 to the mini stack. It has just ticked up into the 20 minute range, so keep that in mind. Okay, the kids, you know, they're on winter break again this week. We're going to help you burn some energy off with them at 625, where you can find so much fun. Here's a hint. <laughs> it's in the East Valley. And at 639, are you going shopping this week? We're going to check out some of those after Christmas sales. At 649, some year-end tax tips that you probably should be thinking about right now. And you can stay up to date on the latest news, weather and traffic by downloading the free ABC 15 app. You can just take us with you wherever you go. Just use your camera phone right there to scan the QR code on your screen. Six twenty four Arizona helping thousands of people habitat for humanity just reached a new milestone creating its first 3D printed home. Check this out. It's in Virginia. It was completed about four weeks faster than a normal construction. In fact, it took 28 hours to print this three bedroom, two bathroom home, and it costs about 15% less. Right now to bring the 3D printer and it's uh, it's it, it, prints out a proprietary mix of concrete is quite expensive to set up for one home. So uh, if we can do multiple homes with them and they're getting more machines now that can do everything from multi-story to triplexes to duplexes, and while the 3D printed, uh, it was printed of the inside, or I should say the outside of the house, we take you inside, it's what you see there. They still needed to bring in all the contractors to do all of the work on the inside. Snow falling in Scottsdale? Yeah, what's up with that? Have our attention, yeah. Uh, the Arizona Boardwalk is getting a winter makeover, and it's on our bulletin board this morning. This is perfect for anyone looking for some fun activities to keep the kids busy after Christmas. You can head down to the Arizona Boardwalk Courtyard, and they can play in the massive amount of falling snow or the inflatable bounce houses and obstacle courses and the slides. There will also be live music. These are pictures from a few years back. Now you can check it out today through Thursday, 11 to 3, and the whole thing is free. That's a key word right there, free. 
Bring the snow to the valley. That's today's bulletin board. Well, if you maybe forgot someone on your list, maybe you're going to see them, you haven't seen them since Christmas, you need to buy them something. How about a Powerball ticket? That would be awesome, especially if they win. Nobody matched all the numbers plus the Powerball in Saturday night's drawing. So that means tonight's jackpot climbs to a whopping $416 million. I've always thought that you give away a lottery ticket. Like, I got a couple this year. Yeah. What if I won? That well, person would be so sad. Not if you shared, right? Well, Sharing is caring. Well, you better if I do it for you. Otherwise, you're going to hear from me. All right, up next at 630. Despite supply chain problems and COVID-19 cases, holiday sales have soared over the past couple of months. We'll take a look at those numbers. Slashing prices to clear out their shelves. Smart shoppers, do I have your attention now? I'm breaking down where you can expect the biggest discounts for end of the year sales. And college football in the Valley. Two bowl games are scheduled this week, but... There's growing concern the matchups could be canceled. And only on ABC 15, you're seeing the moments where a Phoenix police motorcycle officer is hit by a driver who takes off from the scene. Coming up, we'll have an update on that officer's condition. And we are expecting brazy to gusty conditions across Arizona today ahead of several storms impacting our last week of 2021's forecast. We'll tell you how much rain snow some of you can get coming up in your super seven day forecast.